Granted, Father, in Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Praise God. You may be seated. Turn with us, briefly perhaps, to the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Verse number... 14. As you pray with us, please, we, you've been very patient. You've been a, a good audience. So we don't want to presume on that. No, you were in forlorn, but we thank you for your diligence, your loyalty to this meeting. 14, beginning with verse number 14, chapter 4. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. The latter portion of verse number 15. But within all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Our thought, tempted in all points. Tempted in all points. This word is far-reaching. And it's much deeper than it is normally uh, applied. Uh, the, the definition put to test or proof in a venturesome way. The Bible said they were tempted. Jesus was tempted in all points, as we are, yet without sin. We're going to read the account. In Luke chapter 4, verse number 1. Brother Lee, you have it there? 4, 1, Luke. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, Turned from Jordan. Returned from Jordan. And was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of being the devil. Being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days, in those days, eat nothing. Eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. You pray with me. Forty days tempted of the devil. Now Jesus was here establishing his messiahship and he had to be proven beyond question in every phase or point of his life he had to be carried to the very extreme see this is not as the word temptation is normally used it's, it's far beyond that see, he was tempted they were tempted that's not in fact, even the theologians have a problem with that because they wonder how that word could be listed with all of those uh, other words if it only meant just the normal temptation. But there's something beyond that. In other words, the devil was at liberty to press Jesus to the extreme along every line, as far as you can go. In his attempt to see if he would break. And if he had broken, it would have disqualified him for the messiahship. You understand? Listen. Jesus is our example. You find people want eager to be used of God. But do you know God, before God will invest any great interest in you to that extent, you are going to be tested to the very extent along every line. And 
you can disqualify yourself along any line. You understand that? All right. Now you listen. Now, says uh, 40 days, 40 nights, he did eat nothing. Why such drastic uh, consecration? Why would he have to go that far? He was there with the devil, and the devil was unleashed on him. Let me tell you something. When you're one-on-one -on -one with the devil, you got something on your hand. When God gives the devil liberty to go just as far as he wished to, just maybe certain boundaries. See, many of us have never uh, reached that point yet. There are areas that uh, we have not been tempted to the very extreme. What did Job say? Job says, when I am tried. What do you mean, Job, when I'm tried? You've gone through as much as a man can go through. He said, that's not it. Listen, Job is listed time and time again as an example. But he would not have been that example if that particular test he had thrown. Now, he had gone through much when he said this, but now he lost his children, lost all that he had, and even his health, and he, he is saying, when I'm tried. What in the world, you, when you're tried, you've been tried as much as a man, but God knows, uh, he has not undergone that which will determine what he's all about. He said, there's something yet, there's a string that I must pull yet to determine what he's really all about. Many people have made a hundred, have done well, but uh, there was a particular test that God sent them. See, he got to do this. Otherwise, he would have to apologize for those he allowed to go through all of this. That there, there is no other way for God to prove what you're all about. See, he can't just do some little, ex, uh, some superficial test or, or some little uh, fly-by-night situation. He must test you to your very extreme in the area that it matters most. Before he can stamp his approval upon you. I remember when I was in the Marine Corps years ago, boot camp. I guess everybody heard about Marine Corps boot camp. And how extreme they were with that discipline and, and physical rigor. And that this so much so that they lost their mind. They just broke. And some of them just committed suicide. They just couldn't take it. Just too much for them. And uh, I took liberty to ask the drill instructor, what in the world? What is this all about? He said, listen. He said, if they're going to break, we're in a war. Let them break now. Otherwise, they get us on the battlefield and get a whole battalion of men lost. So I'm so we're going to, we, if they're going to break, we're going to push them to a breaking point right now. God said the same thing. If you're going to break, before I send you out in the ministry, a missionary, I'm trying to witness, a, uh, if you're going to break, break now. I'm going to let the devil take liberty because you get out there and bring reproach on the whole cause of God. So I'm going to let him loose on you. Many people are only existing right now because they've never been pressed to that point. They've done well, but they've never been pressed to that point. You pray with us. In uh, the enemy had liberty to run the very gamut with Jesus. You notice it. Every phase of life, the, the tests were not ordinary. They were extreme. Now, let me show you. Let's read a bit of it in Luke. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Want him to break it, want him to break it fast. You know this? Forty days and eat nothing? Make some bread and eat it and break your fast. How many of us have broken our fast in less than 40 hours? <laughs> On the first day, you have a package of cookies under their seat so, uh, waiting for that fast to the clock. So. <laughs> waiting for the clock to hit 12. Well, this is the situation now. If there's some significance here, what? Now, if you have set aside some time to dedicate for the Lord and violate it, that's serious. 
the, the, what? the enemy has broken you. The, the tremendous thing is, you, but Jesus had set out, and the Holy Ghost had not freed him to end his fast, and the devil said, he knew he was hungry. He's going to try him in the point that would hurt most, that affected him most. Forty days, hungry, lean, dry. He knew Jesus could do it. If you be the Son of God, make these stones bread. You notice this extremity? How many people have just lost their sensibility after a while? They just get delirious. And you do just start grabbing for straws. Whatever principle is hinging on the outcome. I mean, I'm hungry, I don't care. What, Esau, you remember Esau? He was hungry, and when he came, he uh, violated here. He forfeited something here that meant everything to him, his birthright. He said, I'm hungry, what difference does it make? I'm hungry. And made an insane decision. He was tempted at a point where it mattered most, and he broke. And how many other people would break with protracted temptation when they become incremental and just keep going and going and going and going? How many? Many people would not break at the outset, would not break with this approach. But if the right approach came tomorrow, they would break. What? Because there's a vulnerability there. You understand? But it takes the right person at the right time to break them. You, you follow me? You follow me? You mark my word. You wonder how it is people have been virtuous and, and steadfast so long and finally break. Well, the right thing had not come along. And the right circumstances had not been created. And the climb had not been right. Many people right now, the fuse is getting shorter. Why? Because there is a trial and a test and a temptation that's coming their way that seems unearthly and that would just shake your very foundation. But here's the situation. That's why you've got to make ample preparation. Look what Jesus had to do. Look how extreme and drastic he had to be. Do you understand? That's why the Bible says, uh, finally, my brethren, uh, how that we should put on the whole arm of God. But you've got to be drastic what? Because uh, that you might be able to stand against the wild of the devil. He's coming in such a way that that can actually uh, shake your sanity. Temptation, uh, uh, I heard a message once, the insanity of temptation. You actually lose your equilibrium. You can, you can be tempted so hard if you're not in the right place. Now, you shouldn't get there. The devil just can't randomly do it. You, you have to be uh, in a certain position for him to do it, but most people get there from time to time. Three months in, children. If you be the son of, if you be the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Now, listen, listen. Everything imaginable. You pray, children. This is what we should be doing in our meditation, getting before God and checking ourselves instead of patting ourselves on the back. Listen. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He kept his sanity here. He didn't allow him to, to uh, excite him. See, uh, the enemy, if you are excitable, you can fall. In the boxing game years ago, uh, you're the guy, and many times you look at and they work at this saying something. You wonder what they're saying. They be playing a dozen, talking about the mama and everything else. Who you excites you, just gets you out. Excites you. Then you, you lose your sanity. You want to get him so bad, you just, just tear into him. Unguarded. That's what the devil does. He can tempt you to an extent that you actually... Well, you remember David? That's what happened. David saw this woman bathing and, and became insane. Well, how do you know? He lost his reason. He lost his reason. What? Now, he, uh, his kinship, his kingship, his record was in jeopardy. His family, everything was hinging on it. But at that moment, nothing made a difference. Y'all better pray. You wonder how it is that some people, how in the world could you do it? He was a pastor of several years and he had a, a sweet family. And, and, and now he's just out there. At that moment, nothing made a difference but satisfying his passion. 
The enemy can excite you, and at that moment, nothing will matter. They can hang you over hell, and you wouldn't change your mind. You, you listen to me, praise our God. And I know it's going to happen to a lot of people because I know you're not that deep. You're not that prepared. You're not going to get out of business with God like that. So you're going to be a victim. You, you, you pray. This is a tremendous thing we're dealing with. I know what I'm talking about because what? Before God put me in this ministry. That's why I'm, I'm going to tell you about grabbing up something here. See, it's a difference when a person make a blunder here and when you get in the ministry. Judas, he, he by transgression fell. Why was he restored? Where did he fall from? You better pray, you better pray hard. Where did they fall from? You don't just fall from the ministry and grab your memories and your little book fashion and start out trying to preach again. You better pray and you better pray hard. Praise our God. You better wait till God exalts you. Now you might wipe your mouth and later won't be used. But when you're going to exalt yourself, put yourself in a position and titles and all this kind of stuff, get up before the face of God, you better be careful. And then you just sit somewhere in the corner and be as saved as you can. You don't clamor for nothing. Amen. Listen. Uh, let, let, let me show you how he works here. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Overwhelmed him. Overwhelmed his mind. Listen. Just took him up there where he could see everything. Y'all better pray. Brother talking about this morning, you get excited. Show you all of this at one time, which you can get like this. Everything at one time. Overwhelmed his mind. Couldn't deal with it. He knows when to turn loose the barrage. Many times he just fishes at you. But when he gets you in a position, then he just opens the floodgates. Then he comes in like a flood and washes you away. One girl, back to the, I talked to her. She said, Brother Hampton, I gave it all that I had. But then it just came in such a way that, wait just a moment. Are you saying that uh, God is unequal and uh, you can do all you can and you still can't stay safe? Well, what, what defense do we have? What hope do we have? In other words, I did all I can and the devil just washed me away anyway. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Amen. Well, some people act like that, but then I'm praying, I'm fasting, I still can't, can't hold on. What, what are you saying? Right. Are you saying that we are, we are on an a, a, a impossible journey here? Uh, we are incapable of achieving a real victory, consistent victory? Are you saying that? That's what the devil does. He finagles you and gets you in a position and gets your guard down and gets your mind weary and chafed. And then he opens up the floodgate and, and washes your way. I mean, really away. You wonder how some of those who left in a week's time, they're out in every debauchery and, and shacking and, and getting high in a week's time. The flood just washes them totally away. They're nowhere near the promised land. I mean, just washed them totally away. Israelites. God's chosen people in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Lights of the world, tempted in all points. Let, let, let's study the word of God today. Verse number 1. All the commandments, all the commandments which, I, which command I command thee this day shall ye, observe shall ye do to observe, that ye may live, ye may live and, multiply, and multiply, and go in and, and, go in, and, possess, and possess the land which the Lord swear. Unto your father. Wait a moment. These people were to be the light of the world. These were God elite people. These were the apple of his eye. They were to be an example to the entire world. But well, I'm gonna show you something. God said, You are to be that. You are to be a beacon on the hill. But before I take you there, I'm gonna to have to make sure that you won't bring a reproach on me. I got to prove you. You listen to me. I'm, I, I must prove you. And we're no exception. Read. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy thou God Thou shalt remember thee all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. Forty years. Thee in the forty years in the wilderness. To humble thee. Humble thee. And to prove thee. Prove thee. To know what, know what was in thine, thine heart. heart. Whether thou wouldest keep it. God had to tempt you. No. Allow you to be tempted along every point. For forty years. It took forty years for God to determine their worthiness. I got to, I'm ready to go. No, no, you're not. There's a temptation yet that you've you got to face. And I'm not sure how you'll come out. 
because you've been a little slack in your devotion. And you go, well, no, not yet. Don't get ahead of yourself. There's another one that I'm going to bring you away. It might be the same uh, in nature, but not in intensity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to increment it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to accelerate it. Last time you wobbled, your knees buckled, but this time you're going under. Why? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the floodgate this time. Forty years, just, just wondering, wondering. Well, Lord, just take them on over. It's just a 40 days journey. But there is a way that they've got to be tested. I've got to allow some things to come their way that will shake their very foundation to see if they're going to tremble or turn aside or renege or recant. Amen? Because there are some, last time they went through it, uh, there was a little shakiness about them. They took a second look. They turned their heads. They looked out the corner of their eyes. So I've got to take them through this and let them face it in every detail and see how they're coming out before I can take them over and allow them to be a beacon or a true representative of me. You're not ready for it. Many people want to grab and run and you send them out there to represent the church and all this kind of stuff and bring a reproach on the whole cause of God. Why? Because they weren't ready. They had not been proven. Amen. This is the situation, children. I tell sometimes, uh, the, this morning, God met when he brought that to you. Just a moment. Now, that's wonderful to encourage them. But now, the people see them up trying to exhort somebody, and the next week they're out there doing something different, that'll be quite reproachful. Uh, there should be some proving. There should be some proving now. Uh, I'll give you a testimony, yes, but don't, don't, don't go too far. Why? Because uh, that same testimony that delighted us might reproach us. Your, uh, we, some visitors might have been here who know, who know you well when they heard that testimony and those great big flamboyant words you were using and all this kind of thing. And now the reproach will be as great as the victory. Forty years. Forty years, God said, well, I've got to prove you. I can't just uh, sweep this under the rug. I've got to prove you. And I've got to uh, allow what's necessary to prove you. See, this is the situation. See, God knows what string to pull to determine what you really are indeed. See, I don't know. You remember uh, Gideon? See, God said, uh, Gideon tried them and he told them what God said. He said, wait a moment. They did well, but let me try them. Now, I'm going to really, I'm going to show you what they're all about. You follow me? You did well, and uh, a lot of them are still here, but, but I'm not satisfied. God, I'm not satisfied with that. Let me try them. Now, I can tell you what they're really all about. Let me do my test. Let me take them through the acid test. A lot of people have done excellent because they have not been tested to a certain extent to this point. Do you understand? When I'm tried, when I'm tried, when you're tried. When I've been tried, I had a temptation. No, I'm not talking about that, which, that little flimsy stuff you're talking about. I'm talking about something infinitely more. I'm not talking about this, this little uh, superficial stuff you're talking about. I'm talking about something real and genuine and devastating. Because I'll try them for you. Now, and when, after I get through with them, then you can put your stamp on them. Because you can rest assured there's nothing there to work with. There's nothing there to work with. I've tested every corner and nook of that being, and there's absolutely nothing there for the devil to work with. Now, take them on. But not until then. Forty years, forty years they wandered in the wilderness. Forty years they wandered in the wilderness. Before, finally, and then guess what? And most of them never went over. What? Because they didn't prove themselves. And the similarity is the same today. The, the ratio is about the same two out of all of those thousands that make it all the way. Why? Well, some, I'm sure, made it uh, 10 years and some 15, some 20, 25, 30, and even 35 or more. And maybe after the 39th year, there's a point that they were tested in, that the enemy opened up the barrage on them, and that threw them for a loop. After all those years, well, why do you wait, Lord, that there's something it was not convenient for me to try them along that line until at that point? I had to set the stage. I had to get the circumstances right. See, the fellow, the fellow, she wouldn't mess with a married man, but now his wife had died, and, and she, but she'd been looking at him all the time. So I had to wait until the, until the wife died. 
But now she's going crazy. She's ready for whatever. Forty years. Now, let me show you the consequences. This is the situation. Now, many of us think that breaking is inconsequential. You can just get up and rub it and stick it back together and keep on going. No, it's not like that. You, you better wake up, praise our God. It's not like that. All right, let, let, let us check it out. Give me verse number 12. Let when thou hast eaten and art full. Let when thou hast eaten and art full. And hast built goodly houses. And, and built what? Therein, goodly houses. And dwelt therein. Dwelt therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply. Go on. And thy silver and thy gold is multiplied. Go on. And all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thy heart be lifted up. And thou forget the you Lord. See, I've, I've got God. the texture. Now you've been poor. You've been under bondage. You pray. Now, and you had absolutely nothing because you were under Egyptian bondage. But now, your silver and your gold are going to multiply. You got freedom now. And you have liberty to do whatever you will. And now, see, it takes many times of change of circumstances to prove what a person is. When they're the big, they pray their bread down, or oh, they're humble. And what not. And they'll come to church in sackcloth. But you let them. Uh, get maybe a hundred thousand dollars to inheritance, and you watch their flamboyance. They become supercilious and everything. What you watch it? You watch it. It takes a certain set of circumstances to prove what some people are all about. Many times, women have had a uh, despotic husband, just this tyrannical husband, just treating like dogs, and they just pray and fast and come to the saints. Remember, me, I got a special request, and that husband turns. The enemy tells him that that's not working. You're just driving her deep into the Lord. Be mushy with her. Bring her some ice cream and roses, and then you tell her, let's go to the show. She'll go with you. Make her mushy. Then you'll, 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 she'll drop her guards, and she'll get fleshy, and she'll lose her anointing. Then whatever you suggest, she'll do it. Because she don't want to, you to turn on her again. She's gotten used to this luxurious living, so now she wants that, so she'll do whatever you suggest because she don't want to get back into that grinding again. As long as they were under bondage, they were humble. They were praying, they were begging God. But when you get, watch it, when you get fat, watch it, when you get fat, when you get luxurious, when you get relaxed, when your circumstances change, it's going to be different, you watch it. You, you watch it. Give me, verse, give me verse 18, if you will. Now let me show you the consequences here. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers. Go on. As it is this day. Go on. And it shall be if it thou, shall be if thou do at all do at all the forget Lord the Lord thy God, God and walk, walk after other, other gods God and serve, and serve them, them worship, worship them. I testify, I testify against you this day, day that ye shall you're gonna perish. perish. You're gonna perish. If you break, you're gonna perish. No, you're not gonna go get up and stick yourself back together and keep going. You're gonna perish. We got this thing wrong. God is testing you. I mean, He has set you on a pinnacle to be a peculiar people. And now there's a certain way I've got to, well, even automobiles. Before they put them on the market, sometimes they let those engines run for maybe uh, three or four hundred hours at full speed for the see if they uh, overheat. Before they put them on the market, otherwise they have all kind of recalls. They take those tires and run them across cross tires and, and all kind of rough terrain for, to see if they'll split. And then they, if, if they're not, they call them rejects. They'll throw them on the scrap heap. They didn't send that rugged test. Well, there we are, here we are, here we are. They were tested in the world 40 years. Now here's the, here's the danger. When you own the scrap paper, you still want to flunk, you still want to flounce yourself before the people. After you're flunked. When you fail to be an example. You better pray, you better pray hard. This is a tremendous thing we're dealing with. All right, so you're going to perish. I, have, I am taking you through here 40 years. I'm testing you along every line. If you flunk, you're going to perish. Why? Because you have ample time to prepare yourself. I'm not quick triggered. I'm not just slicing you off like this. You have ample time to prepare yourself and get situated. Come on, all these years, from 25, 35, even 40, 50 years, 
But sometimes that essay test don't come until 35 or 40 years or more. Solomon didn't. When he was old, when he was old, when he was old. Even though he talks about women and all this and, and uh, admonished the young men how to avoid them and, and, and what to look for and, and how to remain pure uh, despite that. But when he was old, he said, oh, I, would, I tried it, I tried all this stuff and it's all vanity. But there was a certain way he didn't have access to the thousand. The Egyptian and all those different olive colored women, all this kind of thing. And he flunked. There's a tremendous thing. I keep telling you this. Don't you put your hand in your best stuff because you go through one or two little tests and trial. And come and shout and want the same shout. Yeah, a man hit on me today and I told him, no. Oh, pray the Lord, pray the Lord. Well, that's wonderful. Don't shout yet. With the joy hit on you before you shout. <laughs> Amen. The alternative is, is the perish. You mark me? Mark my word. Why? Because you didn't prepare yourself. You escaped, but you didn't prepare yourself. See, many people have shouted because they happened to escape the severe situation, but you're still not prepared. But you see, you're waiting for the next one. You see, see, when you have a close call, instead of just going around boasting about uh, how you came out of it, you should prepare yourself. Wait a minute, I, 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 I escaped that one by the skin of my teeth. Well, they tell you you won't escape at all. I guarantee you. In all points, now every, you, you don't just boast to yourself and boast your door in one door, but test it in all, every point. See, that's not just, see, many people are emphasizing their strong points. I've not taken a drop of medicine in 50 years, I've not done this, I've not had another woman. But there's more than that. You don't have to go out and commit a dirt to the fall or the flounder or be disqualified. You don't have to kill a man. Many people uh, overlook uh, some things that are vital because they have uh, undergone a few situations successfully. But Jesus was tempted in all points. You've got to be tempted in all You've got to be proven in all points, every last point, before you're really qualified. And I don't know, in some instances, it might be in a short period of time, but I don't know how extensive uh, this test would be. I can't tell. I don't know. In some, some of you might have already, and some of you might be 10 or 15 years to come before you, uh, it really is, is determined what you're all about. You pray that we got a few points that we're going to try to expedite it as much as possible. Amen. Uh, turn to Genesis chapter 22. Let, let's study it. It's something in this. Let's, let's study this very closely. Genesis 22, uh, verse number, give me verse number one, I believe I want. 22, one, what does it say? And it came to came pass, to pass after, these things, after these things. God did tempt Abraham. Now you listen, God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him. Said unto him. Abraham. Abraham. And he said. And he said. Behold, here, behold, I, here I am. And he said. He said. Take now thy take son. Take now thy son. Thine only, thine only son, son, Isaac. Whom thou, whom thou lovest. And get thee to into the land of Morah. All right. And offer him there for a burnt offering. All right. Upon the mount which I will tell thee of. That I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. All right. Now you listen. Verse number 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him. Called unto him out of heaven. And said, and Abraham, said Abraham, Abraham. Abraham. And he said, he said here am I. And he said, he said lay not, lay not thy hand, hand upon the lad. Neither do neither thou, do thou anything, unto anything unto him. For now, for now I, know I know that thou fearest. God, wait just a moment, in a moment. In every point, you get something here. Abraham was sentimental. He had given up his dad and his family, but now give up his son. Oh, you think this is... Uh, let me read that in Genesis 12. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father. He had given up his father. The old father left him. God said, Go. Abraham, you better pray. Better pray. Get all your stuff and go, and go on back to believe. Leave, leave, leave your poor dad right there. Said, I believe God. It seemed that it would have been sufficient. Leaving your, your, your dad, 
Your poor old dad who had meant so much to you. He said, no, that's not sufficient. Now leave your son. 25 years later, I'm going to say to you the same as you were back there. Many of us are boasting about how we stood here in this test and that test, but you left your dad, but now it might be your son. And notice how he seemed to toy with his sentiment. Your only son, your little boy, your only little boy. How do you know? Because he was 75 years old when he left, and he was 100 years old when he begot Isaac. So this was uh, more, than two, uh, more than 25 years later when he come back with the acid test. And you notice, despite all that he had undergone and, and successfully, he did not say, now I know until this time. Why didn't he say when he left his father? That, to me, is a big enough test. But you got to be tempted on every line. Now I tried you with your father. Now you're a little baby. You better pray. You better pray. Yes, mama died. It's wonderful. And I know the difference. My mother died and she lived her life and I just took it, you know, and went on by the, even preached a funeral. But oh God, it's one of my children. I had a little daughter there. Looked like she was going to leave me. My God, sweet it, did everything to my heart. And, you, and I, that was the test of my life. And I gave up mom and dad and everything but my little baby. You better pray. You better pray hard. I'm going to tell you something. You can both about what you gave up and what you trusted God for. And I trusted God for this, that, and the other. But with your, with your, with your heart string is being severed. Wait until your heart string is being severed. Come on. So they check you. Test it on every point. Oh, test it with your, with your son. Now with your, uh, your father. Now with your son. The Bible says, if you hold your face set without wavering, without wavering, without wavering, over in Hebrews chapter 10, without wavering. This is a tremendous thing here. All right, Hebrews chapter 10, and I want about, uh, what verse do I want? 22, read it. Let us draw near. Let us draw near. Heart. What? With a true heart. With a true heart. In full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Our bodies washed with pure water. Hold fast the profession of hold our faith. Hold fast the profession of our faith. Without wavering. Without wavering. For he is faithful. You pray. That promise. Hold fast the profession without wavering. Without wavering. Without wavering. Many people had it, but they wavered. And now they're not, they don't have any faith at all. There are many people who would, have, who would have put their life on the line like this 25 or 50, 45 years ago, but not now. You, pray, you better pray, you better pray hard. That's what happened to Anderson and all these other uh, apostate churches of God. They started off good, trusting God and everything, but they wavered. And look at them now. It's not, uh, it's not even an issue anymore. Trusting God for your body is not even an issue anymore. Tell them young ladies, amen, who had a previous marriage, no, you don't matter one time. But uh, their faith failed them when they got a lot of, of uh, broken marriages and, and, and a lot of young people converged on them and they broke to build that congregation. So that's too much to put on them. But they were teaching for you trust God. Almost that happened here. We had a whole barrage of them coming in here. Young ladies, amen, had previous marriages and the husband's still alive somewhere. And all the enemy came and said, now how in the world do you think you're going to uh, have those young ladies to live celibate indefinitely? And, you, and I stood to just lose a whole hunk out of my congregation if I tried to hold that standard. A little 25, almost 30 years ago, some of them are still here, the same way as still pure. But, see, but that, 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 that faith to begin with, see, but after a while, after they began to waver. They began to waver. That's why the apostles are so right now. And this is the situation, children. When they waver, you're not the same. The Bible said, let not that man waver think he receive anything from the Lord. All these groups, when they waver, they're not the same. You've got to understand that they're not the same. You're not going to the same church you went to 50, 60 years ago. See, when you waver, imagine you're, you're, you're broken. And you're not the same. See, let me tell you something, children. If the enemy strikes something vital, you can do what you want to do. I've, you've heard me say this many times. Down south, they used to kill hogs, and uh, in my backyard, they have some hogs. And so, little boy, we would have fun 
uh, running them, they get out and catch them and tackle them and all this kind of thing. And so, but the old experts knew how to uh, make a small hole and pop that jugular, and, that, and they would just bleed to death. So they would catch them, insert that knife, pop that jugular, and, and hold them down the hall with Jeff and start running. And so we start running. He said, don't worry about it. He's not going anywhere. We have struck something vital. Mm. They're not going anywhere. And after a while, you see him wobble, and after a while, he falls. When the devil breaks you along a vital point, you can run. You, you can run. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Mm. A, that's what he's after. He, he, he's gnawing at your vitals. The devil is gnawing at your vitals. He knows that the, if he can break you at a certain point, you are broken. And whatever else you do after that doesn't matter. And I'm going to tell you something, children. When he breaks you along some vital line, recovery is mighty difficult. For to get back into the battle and try to recapture that which you've lost it can be mighty difficult. You better hold fast what you got. If you got faith to trust God, you better hold it. You better hold it. Listen, listen. There was a prominent Church of God minister had taught faith faithfully for several years. And he had a, a, an obstruction uh, in his intestines. The food could not pass through. And of course, you know the end result if something doesn't break or happen soon. And so the doctor says, all right, if you kind of wave a little bit here and give a little, I can promise you two years, but if not, two days. And he recanted. He said, I want to live. All those years, all those years, he had taught and preached people under conviction, laid hands on people. But when he was back in this kind of tested along this line, he had never been scared. I'm sure he had bad colds and headaches, but never to this extent. Never to the extent where he knew that uh, death was imminent within 48 hours, unless he does something. Unless something gives, you better pray and you better pray hard. Test it at every point. Many of you have never been driven to that point. You understand? And this is what you need to be on your face before God preparing for. You cannot go on what happened 25 years ago. Yes, Abraham trusted God and went what God said, go and left his family and everything else. But now, about 25 or 30 years later, here's his son. Here's his son. Oh, I trust God for my own body. I haven't taken a drop of medicine in 20 years, but now I got a little son. You better pray, you better pray hard, you better pray, you better pray hard. I could, I'd rather be sick anytime time see my children sick. I'd rather lay down and languish and have fever and get to see my children like that. Just, I'd rather be going out of the world and see my little babies. You better pray. Let me tell you something, children. This is a recanting thing. Test it in, along every point, in every point. Test it in every point. During the uh, great persecution, when they were saying for being martyred, they were trying to break them. They did the most uh, uh, extreme things they could possibly do. There was a lady who had a little sucking baby, and they would put her out in the hot sun during a feeding time and put the little baby within reach and allow the milk to run from her breast. I'll let you nourish your baby if you can't. And that little baby crying and grabbing and mouth popping your little baby here. And here you're laying on the sun. He says, all right, you, got, you have an option. You have an option. If you can't, I'll let you nurse your baby. That's a temptation. That's the kind of temptation we're talking about here. We're not talking about somebody, a fast woman passing by. My wife was tempted. No, nothing. This is something infinitely beyond that. that that's what you mean, Tim. Taken to the very extreme. Now, that is, that is about as extreme as you can be. But that's what, it, that's what we're talking about. They were tempted. They were tempted. It don't mean they were just somebody gets, uh, uh, trying to allure them or try to seduce them. Oh, that, that's not even reckoned here. They were tempted. When the, everything within you is tried, you're taken to the, to the very extreme. You've been, uh, your elasticity is gone now. You can't stretch any further. But all right, then stretch them as far as you can. That, that's enough. You know, because you know, I'm not going to let you be tempted above your evil. But this is the situation. God knows when you should be able. He knows what able is, not you. Lord, I can't, I can't take no more. 
I got individuals call me all the time. I can't take it, but I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Be of allurement at whatever hour. I'm going to tell you the truth. That is why we have such a turnover in the church. What? People are come to a point. And God give them liberty to, to test them uh, extremely on them and they, and, they, and they break. So you come back to the camping five years later and you wonder what happened on this front row. We have a new, brand new front row in most instances. I trust this row is exceptional. And, and what about that? What about that young man who used to jump so high? And he's doing a different kind of jump now, ain't that? What about you ladies who used, used to just run around the church and be like, she's running around the ballroom now? Help me, help me, Lord, help me. Amen. Yes. What about that lady used to sit up in church all oh, night and almost embarrassingly hugging the husband all over the church when they do at home? That was all. Well, she's, he's hugging somebody else now. Tempted in every point, in every point. Let me tell you, children, some point you've not been really tempted in yet. You might have had some little limit or some kind of suggestion, but I mean sure enough tempted in the sense that we are speaking about here tonight. Amen. Daniel chapter 6, 4, we're going to hasten to a conclusion. Good well. That's what I'm preparing for. That's what I'm on my knees before God for before day every morning. Yeah, I'm thinking nothing for granted here because I know what it's all about. Tempted in every point. I mean, they were tempted. When God looked like he just become uh, not even concerned about you. Just let the devil just go and just 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 stab you to death, as it were. That's your benefit. He got to prove you. There's no other way to prove you. Daniel six four. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against. Daniel concerning the kingdom. Occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. Go on. For as much as he was faithful, neither was any error or fault he found He was faithful, in him. and there was no error or fault in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. All right. Except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. All right, verse number eight. Now, now, O, o king, king, establish, establish the, decree, the decree and sign the writing that it be not, be charged, not changed, changed according, according to the law, the law of the Medes and Persians, which, alter which not. altereth not. Wherefore, King Wherefore, Darius, King Darius, Darius writing, signed the writing and, and the, the decree. decree. Now, when Daniel, now when Daniel knew, knew that, the was that the writing was signed, he went, in he went into his, his house. house. And his windows, and his windows being, being opened in his chamber, in his chamber toward, Jerusalem, toward Jerusalem, he kneeled, upon kneeled his down knees with three his knees times. three times a day. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking about integrity here. He was tempted. You, you get it, wait a minute. Daniel, if you just knock off that praying to your God, all this, this, this consistent praying and incessant praying, if you will, We'll let you live. But now, if you insist to go on with all this super religiosity, you're going in the line. You, you, I was, let me look. You see those bones? Those bones are representative of those who did not submit to our commands. Take a look. Take a long look. All right. You may go and think about it. Read. Now, Dan when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. He went to his house. And his windows being opened. I mean, he chamber. opened the window. He didn't go put his head under the wash pot. Come on with it. In Come on. Chambers toward Jerusalem. Huh? He kneeled down upon his knees three times a day. Th three times a day. And prayed. And prayed. And gave thanks before his God. And gave thanks before his God. As he did a four times. As he always had done. He didn't alter one iota. He would not back up one inch off of anything that he ever been convicted of. Not at all, for any reason. He wouldn't alter it. He wouldn't revive it. He wouldn't soften it. 
That's what you call integrity. But he, but he started off like that. He said, I don't eat that kind of meat. Come on. Amen. For, no, for whatever reason. I don't, uh, well, you're down here in captivity now. You do it. No, we, no I don't eat that. Regardless of what, where I am, I don't eat that. So give me a chance to prove myself. Said, now, I, 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 I got to have my devotion. That's my, li that's my life. I've got to have my devotion, regardless of what, and I've got to pray in the spirit. I can't just do something, go through emotion, I've got to pray right. But the Bible says, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So I've got to pray that way every time I pray. Wherever I am, under whatever circumstance, I've got to pray and pray right because I can't survive otherwise. May God help us today. Say we all these little superficial prayers, and if we pray at all, and, and, and think you're going to be victorious and, and be able to stand in the evil days? God, wake us, awaken us before we slumber. Amen, amen. Test it along every line. Let me tell you something, and we'll, we'll try to conclude with this. The one, I thank God for our ministry. It seems that God has put a ministry together that's going to do something. I know the devil is working. He always has. But our job is to be watchful. Amen. And, 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 and deal with the issues. And the devil, and the devil as well. But now, before a person is stuck in a certain position, they need to be tested and tried and proven along every line. Tell me Titus 1. Titus 1, if you will. Come over here. Titus 1, read. Read. Reverse, reverse. Uh, Titus 1, and I want verse number 6. If any be blameless. All right, the mother bishop here. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. All right, the minute a husband of one wife. If they be having this, faithful children. Well, now you see, listen, because you're going to be an example. He can't preach against uh, a plurality of marriages if he got more than one. Come on. Come on with it. Having faithful children. He's he going to have to curtail his message. He's going he, he he to have to, that's what, what brought the silence. They let everything in the congregation. Now they can't preach against it. Because many of them in double marriage themselves. So you got an open door. If you've got a, a minister in double marriage, you can do what you want to do because he can't touch you. Come on with it. Having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly. Faithful children, what? Not accused of right or unruly. Come on. For a bishop must be blameless. Must be blameless. As a steward of God. As a steward of God. Not self-willed. Now listen now, you notice all this catalog of things here. Why? Because you've got to be tested along every line. Not self-willed. Not soon angered. Well, come on, you, 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 you can't be uh, uh, hot-headed. Not giving the wine. Because if somebody go off on you, you'll you, you retaliate in kind. You like you ready to lock horns that somebody provoked you back in the corner, you come out on them. If they back in the corner, you come out. Come on with it. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. No striker. Not not striker from the pulpit or with your fist. Not that, given. There's there more than one way to strike. I can strike from the pulpit. If you provoke me and get on my get under my skin, so to speak. Come on with it. Not given to filthy lucre. Not given to filthy lucre. But a lover not of given to, wait a minute, what brother Ron was talking about this morning. Not given to filthy lucre. It becomes, it becomes filthy when you, when, you, when you do it wrong. When you're with a certain attitude, with a certain quest, yeah. it becomes filthy. And you can launder it all you want to. <laughs> Come on with it. But a lover of hospitality. Love of hospitality. A lover of good men. Love of good men. Sober. Sober? Yes. Yes? Holy. Holy? Temperate. What? Temperate. Temperate. Read. Paper. This is the front section of our... Newspaper. All right, we probably it. Well, Come on with it. Washington, D.C. We read loud and clear and distinct now. Obesity climbs list of killers. Obesity climbs. Be temperate now. You got to be temperate. Obesity climbs the list of killers. Come on. More Americans soon will be dying of obesity. Than more, uh, more Americans will soon be dying of obesity. Than from smoking. If the current trend persists. Why do we teach against smoking? Somebody stand up and tell me quickly. Why do we teach against smoking? Anybody? Why? Huh? Damn it to your body. He said obesity is worse than that. So I, if I can't teach against that, then I can't teach against smoking. Because that's worse. It is heading the list, if you please. 
It was smoking, but now it's obesity. That's a big word, Brother Hampton, but read the definition there. Obese, having eaten itself. Ha Wait, hold it, hold it. Now you got to be very here because they got to get it. Come on. Obesity's root word is obese. Obese. Having eaten, it having eaten itself fat. It's, it's a fat. You, and you did it by eating. Oh, but oh, this, this, this spare tire. Oh, I eat myself fat. Well, you want a cigar? That might be less harmful. Lord. Pack of cool. The Bible says this is worse than a pack of cool. The, 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 the people that's, it, it states it. Uh, and that's a, that's a uh, documented report. Come on! And it goes on to tell why. It goes on to tell why. Give me another part of that. Which would make being fat the nation's number one cause of preventable death. Or preventable death. If you didn't eat like that, you, would be, you, you, you could prevent dying. Sister Bethel says something less in the, in the Springfield media. She says, if you're going to get all this mess, you know it's going to, again, she don't call her to pray for you. Mm. Why are we praying? We, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are praying a vain prayer. You're going to do something that's deliberately killing you and ask me to wake me up and say, pray for me at night? Disturb my rest? And not only that, you're going to, you're going to mess yourself up. Why? Because... If you get sick, the people can't handle you. We, we do, how many people you take your turn, turnover of 400 pounds, male or female? And then we don't, they don't have any pounds to fit you probably. So you're going to be in another mess. So we, since we can't handle you, what, what are we going to do? Take the hospital. Well, then now they're going to do something to you and, and, and you're going to another conviction. You better, mess, you better watch yourself. You better watch yourself. John Wesley knows if you were a beast, you couldn't get in the pulpit. Read it in, in his journal. You, you couldn't represent the ministry. In 1973, I had a ministry with about 350 or more. And so I had a young lady there to come to me. She came. And I was arguing about smoking. And she came to me and said, You are putting up all this stuff about smoking. And he was bloody. She buttoned my lips. That is killer. Number one. Not cigarettes. Used to be cigarettes. And now the insurance is of such that it's unaffordable. A company moved because they could not afford the insurance because of obese people. You're going to die. One fellow radio said, they said, Dad, you don't find any fat old people. They all died. They were left one of them. Prematurely. Preventable. Preventable, if you will. And see, and, and it's, a, it's an indication of intemperance. See, listen. Uh, uh, <laughs> God help us. See, you will build proportionate. The largest part of a man shouldn't be his belly. His chest. You understand? See, that, that, that's a normal proportion. I'm glad God made you all with some elasticity, otherwise you'd bust. Because you just stretch, you just stretch out of proportion. Listen. He made you that way, so women, so that you, if you, can, if you get uh, expecting a baby, you can expand, not to eat yourself to death. That, that expansion is so that uh, in normal procedure, when you get pregnant, you, you expand, so there's some elasticity there. That's not the eating, 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 eating. You, you, you got it wrong. This, this, I take this seriously. It hurts my message. I, I have to, I have to, I have to, I'll have to delete that. The other man had to delete the double marriage, and I got to delete temperance. So both of us silent. But see, before you get a bishop, 
you got to be testing every point. Not just one. You got to select the right woman. Mary got to be right. His food intake got to be right. And the whole scope. Amen. You got to be tried and see if he's a glutton. And a gluttonous man and a wine bibber is in the same category. You know, every time you find a gluttonous man, you find wine bibber right beside it. Is, is it strange that they will always be categorized together? Come on. They, it's both sensual. They're both, they're both going to satisfy the senses. The Bible speaks against sensuality. The Father is in heaven by the space of half an hour. Shout, he shall be. Thou shalt be Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thou shalt not kill. Glory! Thou shalt not kill. Hallelujah! Thou shalt not get fat. Glory! Uncontrollable appetite, not good. It's a good habit for me, so it's food. It's a habit. It's not a necessity. No, no. You wouldn't expand if you only ate that was necessary. You wouldn't expand. No, you wouldn't expand. You might develop, but you wouldn't expand in the wrong place. You might expand your muscle, but that's ain't more in some cases. That's not fat. See, fat is destructive and tempted in all points. See, some people. Uh, brothers, in fact, the old six-year-old brother, that was an issue with him. That was an issue with him. Come on! So go ahead, where you will, it's going to be the same. Well, I might go somewhere else, but go ahead, that's up to you, but you're just going to be the same. Where do you go? Uh, brother Susag and those, the fellow had a condition, and they called and they fasted and prayed and, and went up there to pray for the brother they had on him, and when they got there, he had a big plate enough for three or four people. They packed their bag and went straight home. I'm not telling you. You gonna call it a pray? We fast and pray, and you got enough a big old plate to pray. Wait till I get through it. I'll be there. They, they turned right around, and went home. And that's what I'm gonna do in some cases. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna let you know that now. Amen. This is a tremendous thing we're dealing with, children. Now the consistency here. They don't, they don't lay everything else in the gutter, and then even and then omit a weightier matter. That's what the Pharisees did. See, they, 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 they nailed something to the cross, but then there are some weightier matters they omitted. Then be down an example to the flock, tempted along every line. They have a consistency demanded here. That's what proved Jesus as Messiah. He stood along every line. Amen. The devil couldn't push him overboard anywhere, along any line. To preach a consistent message. Amen. This is the thing here, children. Now, are you ready for the extreme temptation along any line? I remember uh, the time when my fast day and I would go maybe having some kind of situation, maybe some kind of Christmas together, and I'd go by it. And all that stuff be there, and my fast is not quite over yet. Oh, God. I just have to stand with it. And then and, and just pardon myself. Gas pain, and you all, I could get immediate relief here. Even Bible says, uh, the fault you're not one another, unless it be with consent for a season, that you give yourself to fasting and prayer. So you can break your fast more than eating. And those are the time when it's most alluring. <laughs> they were tempted. In other words, they could have gotten relief if they just had to live it a little bit. And they did it just to have a better resurrection, not because it was outlandish, just not to break that testimony. There are some memorable events in my life. I'll tell you this, you can get this way if you want to. 
Brother Salih's dad, and I was very, very close. The brother had a letter of chain, so I think the chain slipped off or something and dropped it on his leg and tore it wide open. And you know, said, you know what he said? You know what the man said? I ought to get a testimony out of this. Rather than worrying about gangrene and what's going to happen and beating to death, he's out to get a testimony out of this. It's the kingdom first. Here he is concerned about a testimony and his life is at stake. And his first concern is, is getting a testimony out of it. His first concern is the kingdom, not my body, not my well being. Tempted on every line. I mean, to the very extreme. So you're not ready until you've been tried to the very extreme along every line. Not one or two. Not for a minute. I don't know how many years it takes. I, mean, I, I can't determine that. But I'm telling you tonight. Otherwise, we'll be a, another the victim of grim statistic. Graveyard. I saw going to New York once in Philadelphia on Highway, I believe, 9 on Turnpike, and there was a uh, cemetery maybe 10 or 15 miles long. Millions of people. And I, I said, you know what? All of those people died from something that may be different. Some got a bad cold and the cough persisted and died just from a bad cold. Some cut the toenails off too short instead of gangrene. Some had a little pimple, and they picked at it, and it began to grow, and got infected, and they died from that. All those people you see backslidden, and some of them gone for good. Some decided, I'm not going to church tonight. Some decided, well, I, I'm, 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 I'm busy. I can't, I missed my devotion this morning. And lukewarmness set in from that moment. And they never, re they never recaptured that fire. Now they're gone for good. But it started off just casually missing the service. Uh, having uh, meaningless devotion. Reading the Bible like they read the story, but getting nothing from it, no inspiration whatsoever. Just going through emotion. And that was the beginning of the end. Old man I used to pick up for church each night. And I remember one day, he said, I'm not going there, I got a little headache. But he had headaches many times, but that was the beginning of the end. All started just a little headache, and then that terminated him. A few days later, old man was gone, but first it was just a little headache. First it was just a little attitude you held and then get rid of it. You got provoked and didn't deal with it. You overspoke and never straightened it out. And you never, you never straightened it out. You toyed with it. You, you took a cup, a cup of hot water to try to assuage it, but you never straightened it out. And it just kept going, it just kept eating you away on the inside. That some people are living just being eaten up on the inside. Why don't they go and deal with it? Get it straight, confess and go and do what they got to do. And just, just let it eat them up, just let it eat them. Eat, 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 eat. That's why you have nothing to stir, because you've been eating up. You have nothing to stir. You, you're eating up. Why go to miserable being eaten when I could just go in and humble myself before God? I'm like Job now, Lord. Help me, give me grace when I'm tried. Lord, I don't know what's coming tomorrow. Sometime I get up in the morning, I'm so, I say, Lord, what is, am I gonna face an earth-shaking situation today? I don't know whether my little boy come back home in a body bag or not today. Step behind a school bus, and there he is laying there. Miss, are you so-and-so? But yes, yeah, can you come down, please? And there is a big crowd. And he's in there, oh, my child, you never know. And then they got, got him covered, got him, got him, oh, why they got him covered all together? You know what that means. They got him covered up all together. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Up in, up in Vermont, there was a minister, daughter without ice skating, and she fell through. And when she emerged, she could not find the hole, and she suffocated under the ice. And they told the father, he just cried and relieved himself. But they went and told the mother, I mean, our daughter fell through, and I'm afraid. She, she can take it. She hard, she dropped out of it. She 
couldn't handle it. She never had gone. She handled a lot of things, but she never had gone through that. She couldn't have too much for her. You're going to have a situation that's too much for you if you're not careful. If you don't heed the word of God, heed these admonitions, you're going to find that when you're really tempted, I'm talking about the way we're talking about, I'm leaving a little, some kind of little bit, really tempted, you're going to find something not ready. Now the time, you don't wait until you get in the middle of it. You don't wait until you get in the middle of it. Now the time to get cry before God. Cry now. Shall we stand? You want to pray? with a clamorous, angry woman that took him out of here. Never had been exposed to that before. That was his. Couldn't survive it. Wilderness. And I looked up wilderness. That's what a wild beast was. Jesus said, I know what wilderness is a wild beast. And you can, that's the 